Hello from Superior Tech. Nolan here, and today we're going to be going over our 54 inch tractor shovel. We're going to cover some details with it and show installation. This tractor shovel is compatible with John Deere X400, X500, and X700 Ultimate Series tractors. Now, to install, you need a couple things. First, you need a 54 inch quick hitch front blade on the front because, as you can see, the tractor shovel mounts to this blade, which makes installation very easy. In addition, you need a quick hitch kit hydraulic angling kit, and 250 pounds of rear ballast. In our case, we have six John Deere suitcase weights at 42 pounds apiece. Mounting this shovel on your tractor will allow you to do numerous tasks around your house. You build a haul mulch, it certainly beats a wheelbarrow, haul gravel, carry around bricks, and do many other things such as digging holes, and you can also utilize downforce to do ground engaging work. You can hold up to 200 pounds in this tractor shovel you have a 2.25 cubic foot capacity and a lift height of 8 to 12 inches. This is also a very safe attachment. It has a low center of gravity which eliminates tipping issues. And finally, operation is very simple. You control this tractor shovel using the existing hydraulic controls on your tractor. Now let's move on to installation. The first step is to take out this angling cylinder here. It's going to be repurposed to use to dump the tractor shovel. To take it out, remove these two pins. This one I've already started. To take out the second one, reach underneath and push it up. Take out the angling cylinder. Now I'll take this bracket here and we're going to put it right where that cylinder was. Line the holes up and insert the pins. This last pin might not go in all the way as you can see here, so just work it around a little bit until it drops in place. Next, we have to engage this locking pin to prevent the tractor shovel from tripping when in use. After that, make sure these skid shoes down here are raised to the highest setting and make sure that is the case on both sides. Now we have to mount the pivot tube to the blade and in order to do that we have to drill four half inch holes in our blade. Now before we do that, a couple notes. First, make sure you have safety glasses when you're drilling holes, that's very important. Next, don't worry about these holes damaging the integrity of the blade. This is a John Deere licensed product and John Deere engineers have confirmed that these holes do not damage the blade in any capacity. Next, you can ignore these holes along the top of the blade here. They are for a different attachment. And finally, we already have the holes drilled on the blade, as you can see, because this tractor has used the tractor shovel previously. Now we can move on to getting the holes drilled and mounting the pivot tube. Grab a U-bracket with a tab. Line up this hole on the bottom of the U-bracket with this hole that's already here on the blade, right next to the spring. Make sure this tab is flush with the support on the back of the blade, and this portion of the bracket is flush with this back piece of the blade. After you have it lined up, grab one of these shorter flange head bolts, come up through the bottom, and attach a flange nut. Just hand tighten for now, because we're going to have to loosen these again in a few moments. After you have it tightened, take a sharpie or some other instrument that you can mark the blade with, come in through the bracket, and mark the center. After you do that, you can remove this bracket and now you can center punch right in the middle there where you marked your hole. You can drill a 3 16 inch pilot hole from there and finally you can drill your half inch hole. Once you've completed that, repeat the same step on the other side and then take your U bracket with a tab and attach it on here once again. Come through the bottom and attach the nut. This time you want to keep it very loose so it can flop around like this. Do the same on the other side. Now grab your pivot tube and center it on the blade. If these mounting arms on the pivot tube do not line up with the mounting bracket we put in place of the angling cylinder earlier, then your pivot tube is backwards so flip it around. And make sure these mounting arms line up with that bracket we put in. Now we want to slide the pivot tube down 
and set it right inside of these two brackets we just put in. And now we'll move on to attaching the top of these two brackets to the blade. To attach the top part of these brackets, grab a W bracket and slide it right over top of the pivot tube inside of the U bracket with a tab. Grab a bushing and put it in between the U bracket. Then grab one of these longer flange head bolts and put it right through the hole you just drilled in the front. After you get it through, attach a flange nut. Do not tighten with tools yet, just loosely tighten it with your hands. And repeat the same thing on this bracket over here. Grab your W bracket, slide it right over top of the pivot tube. Then you can start the bolt. Insert the bushing. and attach your flange nut on the outside. After you finish mounting these two brackets, we can tighten all four bolts with a 3 quarter inch wrench. You can also tighten these bottom ones here. I already did that part. Now we have to come over here to the far left and right side of the blade to attach the final two brackets. To get your hole, take a U-bracket and push it up against the pivot tube so it's nice and snug underneath. Don't push up too high or let it sag down. Just push it up so it's snug with this pivot tube. So that's your vertical height of the hole. Horizontally you want to be two and a half inches from the edge of the blade. So two and a half inches from the edge of the blade and snug up against your pivot tube. Once you have it in position, grab your sharpie or marking instrument, hold the bracket there and mark your hole. When you're finished, Remove the U-bracket, center punch, drill a 3 16 inch pilot hole, and then you can drill your half inch hole. Repeat those same steps on the far side. And once you're done with that, now we can attach these brackets. Slide the U-bracket underneath the pivot tube, insert a W-bracket right over top, get your bolt started, insert a bushing, Push the bolt through, grab a flange nut, and repeat this on the far side. Once you have all four brackets on and secured, you can tighten with a 3 4 inch wrench and make sure everything is secure. Now we're going to mount the shovel to the blade. The first thing you want to do is make sure the blade is raised half an inch in the air. After that, make sure the shovel is pushed into the blade as we have done here, and make sure the tapered edge is facing outwards. Now you want to grab a side sheet. This side sheet is going to mount inside the wall of the shovel and inside the pivot tube arm. Now what's going to happen is you have six carriage bolts and the carriage bolt is going to go through the pivot arm first and into the side sheet. Same with the bottom. You're going to go through the wall of the shovel first into the side sheet and you'll attach the nut on the inside of the shovel. So let's actually attach this now. Once you're finished with all six, do not tighten, just repeat this same step on the other side, and once you're finished with the other side, then you can tighten it. Now we have to reattach this cylinder that we previously took off to the pivot tube bracket up here and the one where we mounted at the bottom. Now this is going to allow you to dump your tractor shovel. So first, line up the holes, and then we can insert the pins to attach. Finally, 
Make sure this knob underneath is turned all the way clockwise and closed. This will make sure all of the hydraulic fluid is concentrated in the front where the tractor shovel is and make sure it will run at full speed. If you found this tractor shovel interesting and you would like to purchase one, it's a John Deere licensed product, so head over to your John Deere dealership and pick one up. However, if you have any pre- or post-purchase questions, reach out to us at Superior Tech and we'd be happy to help you out.